welcome back, Zergay fans, to Nail is a Don, our main your host, Dominic, and we are back with the October 2018 Spooktacular 3v3 Tournament Recap, and we're on to the round three of Swiss on Forgotten Crossing. So for this round, we're going to be watching the match between 400 Manu and Isaac and Catastrophe Top Guy and Segaro. And that's going to be right now, because it's replays, because it's recap. So let's go! So these side of the map, we have the Moment Clan, Segaro going for spiders. We have Topcat going for air. Again, it worked really well last time. And Catastrophe going for the Shieldbot Factory. While in the West, Team being Team West. I'm not sure what clan that is. Lobster Clan, I think. Gonna have Isaac, 400, and Manu. Isaac is... Where's Isaac? Oh, it's thrown in the north. Okay. Hidden Cloakbot Factory for Isaac. Cloakbot Factory for 400. Interesting redundancy. And Manu going for Air Factory and completely seeding the entire bottom side of the map. So I think Segaro, we're going to see them doing a lot of work in the bottom side of the map. Though, to be fair, Forgotten Crossing is actually kind of small. It's also not a very map we see very often. Okay, I guess it's small compared to Valis Marineris, which is a giant map. But even then, it doesn't... I think this is like 14 by 12. So we're not in a map that's going to be getting a whole lot of super long games... Well, a lot of areas that are contested. I mean, Zagero getting the bottom side of the map is huge, economically speaking. And while Isaac is basically taking the entire top side of the map, Catastrophe is, to some extent, going to be actually trying to contest that. And probably succeeding, too. So as it stands, it looks like 400 is going to be pretty much the one running the entire front line here. Manu and Top Guy going against each other for air control, but it looks like Top Guy being a little more aggressive with that. 400, however, having already taken the center of the map relatively decisively, should be able to convert that into an attack onto Catastrophe from the looks of it, just as a bit of a... maybe a small raid, maybe a small bit of harassment going in. Might work fairly well. At the same time, though, looks like... Oh, man, Manu, are you going to be able to survive this? Yeah, you are, doing fine. All right, Manu actually able to... Take most of the air control. They're they are ahead on air control, and nothing stopping 400 from coming in here into Top Cac's base and starting to really damage the factory. I don't think they'll be able to kill it, but heck, if they get rid of the owl, that might work. And no, not getting rid of the owl. In fact, not gonna be able to do much of anything. Maybe harass Segaro's base a little bit. This venom should be up quickly enough. It won't be a big deal. The, oh, the glaze are too close together. The venom will stop them all at the same time. That is a very dead army. Well, that's venom for you. Kind of see that coming. I'm a bit surprised we didn't see Manu split them up. I'm not sure if they were paying attention. Sorry, Manu. Seeing 400 split that up. Because clearly attention was not necessarily being paid there. Since the Venom was almost done. Now, when the Venom is almost done, you want to make sure your Glaze are not next to each other. Otherwise, that happens. Because that could have been a dead Venom otherwise. If the Glaze were far enough away, that Venom would have gone down. But, not right now. As it stands, Topcac also looking to get back air control. However, 400's little raid attempt, that actually did work out really w relatively well, because now 400 has managed to really secure, help secure the north side. Manu is still kind of working on the south side of the map. They don't have a whole lot to actually build with. The, basically, the commander is the only frontline force there. But the fact that 400 was able to deal a lot of damage and push Catastrophe and Topcac back means that it's still a lot easier for stuff to be set up. I mean, static defenses eventually will be set up. So while Topcac does have a bit of an air support advantage right now, 400 could just build a Razor, like right about here. And that Razor would essentially mean air control more or less goes back to Team West. Mumble Clan will have to deal with that. And they don't really have the forces in place to deal with that. Not until the 400 has plans for that kind of thing, though. And at this point, Team West is still behind economically somewhat. Team Mumble Clan... It's more they have a lot of territory to work with that they can then turn into economy. But at the same time, they also have the fact that Manu's commander is the only one that's really there. And actually, there's the Razor. Not quite there in time. Manu's commander desperately trying to upgrade in time before the Venoms get them. They should be able to get rid of at least one of the Venoms. Ah, there we go. Nice choice of the Lightning Gun. Feed the Venom their own medicine there. I like it. Far over the flank as well, so that actually nicely opens things up. Manu will be able to take this Metal Extractor over here. And if they just get a Razor up, like, right now, that would be pretty amazing. What did they go for upgrades, by the way? Lightning Rifle, that's it. I thought they might have gone for the Nano Lathe, but nope, just the Lightning Rifle. Still, they have 14 build power just for being an Engineer Commander. Oh no, 12 build power, what? I thought they leveled up two each time. Okay, must have changed. 
12 build power coming in for the commander. It's still a bit better. But yeah, to me, the main thing is that, that this, this center of the map is pretty well taken by Team West. Team Mumble Clan is in an awkward position right now where they really don't have anything holding it. I mean, 400 is doing a great job just providing the pressure there. And Isaac has securely taken the north side of the map. So there's really not a whole lot that can be done in this little... Like, this little corner right here. This little corner right here, you can't really do much through here because there's enough defenses to stop it. And enough of a force nearby. This bridge is kind of the only way in. So right now, Isaac's doing a great job just making sure that the rest of their team does not have to worry about anything. Because the north side is all... It's dealt with. It's defended. So the south side can be dealt with. Basically, Team West can sweep down, get rid of Segaro's forces, wipe out this valley here, or at least contain it, and then have a pretty secure economic advantage, turn them into military advantage, and probably take the game from there. The only thing is, though, that the force composition used here by 400 is being countered reasonably well by Segaro. Granted, it's just fleas. There's not a whole lot that works against other than the Ronin and I mean there is a Reaver right there so it doesn't quite work out but it's still something so at this point it looks like we're just gonna be seeing gradual attrition against the Mumble Clan team I I think I'm missing something but it doesn't seem like it looking back in their bases Tomcat focusing a little bit more on what they can get out of the Air Force Get the air pad up too with no bombers, so I'm guessing they're planning on going for bombers fairly soon, but right now all they're building is Swifts. So I'm really not sure what the plan is. Because at this point, Swifts are they're doing fine, but there's only so much they can do, and there will be stronger anti-air. I mean, there's already a razor right here. And already Mumble Clan looking at a possible resign. I I mean catastrophe, yeah, I can kind of see why they'd be concerned. They can't really break into Isaac's base, and well. Territory is being lost over to the south side of the map. Seguero hasn't been able to hold against all these glaives. Like the glaives and Ronin. Again, Ronin do a really good job against the Spiderbot factory because there's not a whole lot to directly counter them. So the fact that 400 went heavy on Ronin makes a lot of sense and has been working remarkably well. Still though, Thunderbird coming in here looking to stun out everything and that Thunderbird's able to do its job. Then that is going to be a massively disabled front line. A almost... Fully disarmed front line. Enough run and up over that is not going to be enough to really open the door for Segaro to walk in and wipe out everything. And Manu's commander still around. There's still Ronin that are doing fine on the north side of the map. And Isaac, are they going for a push? No. No, they're not. Catastrophe Hover is hiding with their commander and leaving. Catastrophe's done. Catastrophe has no faith that this game is going to go Mumble Clan's way. I mean, considering the economic realities, yeah, I can kind of see that. Makes sense. I mean, I, I honestly would be surprised if Segaro managed to find a way of pulling back Topcac. I'm kind of surprised they wouldn't go for any bombers, but no, they didn't. And that is going to be it. Very decisive victory for the Western team there. Or for... Really, I'm not sure what those clan tags are, because I'd probably just call it by that if I knew what that was offhand. But yeah, so Manu Isaac 400 getting another win under their belt. Or rather, making it so that... Their opponents don't manage to get much. Oh, they'd actually win the last two matches. They're up 3-0 at this point in the tournament. So, they've done really well. As you can see right now, yeah, they've... They went... Oops. Need to advance the results. But yeah, they have managed to get their nice little 1-0. Like, as you can see, they're... They've done brilliantly well. So, yeah, they've... They've got everything going for them. And... The only other comp competitor at this point, I think, is actually Catastrophe Top Pack and Segaro. They were also undefeated up to this point. They'll be up against Venom, Kingstad, and Astron, whereas we have F we have Steel Blue, Steel Blue, Green Squig, and FFC against Spraying Droppy and Zenfer, who we saw last round. Apparently won their round three match. Not participating team also winning their round three match, and Dime Friend, Fireblick, Ezeride winning as well. So I think Dying Friend, Firepluck, Ezeride, yeah, they are also, they're also pretty happy. They're currently 2-1 for them. So yeah, Dying Friend, Ezer Firepluck, Ezeride, 400 Manu, Isaac, and Catastrophe, Top Kex, Gero are all pretty much the top rated teams at this stage of the tournament. I, if it gets to the end and it ends up with some even standings, then we are going to be seeing tiebreaker matches. But we'll get to that after a short break as we set up round four.
which will be played on Talus. Need a little map. All right, so back with that, and it'll be the FFC Steel Blue Green Squig versus Sprang Droppies in for match. So stay tuned for that. It'll be up in a couple minutes. <laughs> 